بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good morning students Today we're gonna have a unit 4 lesson Unit 4, a grammar lesson uh, Page 56 Phrasal verbs Phrasal verbs What are phrasal verbs? A phrasal verb is a made is made up of verb plus a particle So a verb plus a verb, a, a particle. What is a particle? A particle is a word. So it is a word that is used as an adverb. You know adverb. Adverbs are words usually ending in ly that describes how the verb in a sentence uh, made or when or why sometimes okay so this is an adverb like an adjective do you know adjective adjective is a word that describes the subject the one who did the verb okay so an adjective describes the subject while adverb describes the verb itself okay now uh, so a particle is used as an adverb or there's another option or a preposition what is a preposition you studied before there are preposition of time and there are preposition of place usually the common and most famous prepositions are in on at okay the particle gives the verb a different meaning so maybe you have the same verb but different particle it will give the verb a different meaning from which is used to be okay one verb can be combined with different particles to create different meanings like for example look at pick 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 one verb the same verb the verb pick okay But look at the different particle here. Okay, the verb uh, uh, usually uh, comes in different uh, tenses, for like picked, picks. Okay, uh, look at the different particle at, on, out, and up. Let's see in these examples what's happened. to the verb pick in every, in every sentence, okay? So let's begin. Didn't you like the dinner? You only picked at it. So picked at. What is the meaning of pick at here? Eat without enthusiasm. So like you don't want to eat. You're not having enthusiasm. You're not hungry. for the food so pick at eat without enthusiasm look at the second example my sister picks on me for being a vegetarian so a vegetarian is someone who eats only vegetables you know he or they doesn't like they don't like meat okay what what's the meaning of pick on here pick on means tease tease to make someone uncomfortable either by doing something or saying something so teasing pick on we need to pick out a restaurant for the celebration so what the pick out here means pick out choose choose Okay, look at last ex uh, example. Will you pick up a gallon of milk on your way home? Pick up. Okay, pick up here means get or buy. Like the example, they ran out of milk. So, will you pick up a gallon of milk? Get or buy. Okay, as shown in the examples, The same verb, different particle, had 
different meanings. Okay, let's get to the second part. Separable and non-separable phrasal verbs. So, separable from separating or separated. Non-separable, you cannot separate them. You cannot take them apart. Okay? So, you have two kinds of phrasal verbs. Separable and non-separable. Let's see examples of separable and non-separable phrasal verbs. Let's begin with non-separable. Some phrasal verbs are non-separable. So, some of them. You cannot separate them. Okay? The noun or pronoun always follows the particle. So, either a noun or its pronoun, okay, you know, nouns and pronouns, pronouns like he, she, it, they, okay, always follows the particle. Follows the particle, come after. So, follows, come after, like the example here, I ran into Janet at the supermarket, okay, look, this is a phrasal verb. Now, this is a noun, Janet. You can uh, replace the noun with a pronoun. Look at the same example, but without the noun. But he, uh, he wrote it in a pronoun. I ran into her. Who's her here? It's Janet. Okay? Look at this. This is important notes. You cannot say, I ran Janet into. Like we said, ran into, it is an, it's an example of a non-separable phrasal verb. Okay? Non-separable. You cannot separate them. They must come together. Okay? There are uh, other examples. Call for. Come across. Come from. Go on. Look into run into, tire off, turn out, okay? You must memorize these examples as examples of non-separable phrasal verbs, okay? Now, let's get to the separable. Many phrasal verbs are separable. So, many, there are many phrasal verbs are separable. While there are some phrasal verbs are non-separable, okay? You may, you must remember that. Many phrasal verbs are separable. A noun object can come after a particle. So a noun object, you have subject, the verb, and the object. A noun object can come after the particle. For example, the chief or the chef. This is uh, the noun. This is the subject. So the, the, the person who done this verb cut, but now you have a phrasal verb. So, where is the object? The steak. The steak. Okay? Look at this, a noun object. So, this is a noun object. Come after the particle. So, the chef cut up the steak into small pieces. Okay? You can, now we are talking about separable. So, a noun object can come in between the verb and the particle. Look at this. We said that uh, they are separable, so you can separate them by the noun object. So, the noun object, the stake, can come between the verb and the particle. Okay? Like this is the example, same example, but w when we separate them. The chef cut the steak up into small pieces. Look at the noun object. It became between cut and up, so we separated them with the noun object. Okay? So cut up is an example of a separable phrasal verb. If a pronoun object is used, it must come between the verb and the particle. Look at this. If you use a pronoun object, not a noun, but a pronoun. Like we said, he, she, it, they, you, we. Okay, these are pronouns. If a pronoun object is used, 
it must look at must so it must come between the verb and particle like this example the same example but i used a pronoun instead of a noun here in the object okay the chef cut it up into small pieces in this case the pronoun object the pronoun object must come between cut and up or the verb and the particle in a phrasal verb okay you cannot say it like this the chef cut up it it would be wrong okay if it is a pronoun it must come between uh, the verb and a particle okay other examples of separable phrasal verbs look at these examples they are a lot they are many like we said here many phrasal verbs are separable many you have more examples here in separable phrasal verbs than in non-separable phrasal verbs okay look at the examples also you have to memorize these examples with practice you will memorize them okay burn off cut up figure out fit in give up point out put on send back take off take out talk over tell apart think over throw away throw out turn down turn into wake up wipe up okay you must memorize them and use them in examples it will help you to memorize so use them and practice them uh, helps to memorize them quickly okay let's look at the last part of this grammar lesson three word phrasal verbs you have now three words phrasal verbs uh, the one before phrasal verb we said it's made up of a verb plus a particle okay now what are the three words phrasal verbs three words phrasal verbs consist of a verb a particle plus a preposition you have now another preposition like we said before a particle either an adverb or a preposition now you have another option in a three word phrasal verbs to add a preposition also so you have a verb a particle a preposition these are three words okay what is so special about the three word phrasal verbs so three wo uh, three words phrasal verbs are non separable so they are non separable also uh, only they are only non separable you cannot separate them okay so the noun or pronoun always comes after the phrasal verb in the three word phrasal verbs a noun or a pronoun always comes after okay <coughs> look at the example the doctor says you must cut down on sugar look at this three word phrasal verb cut down on okay cut the verb down is a, a particle then a preposition on okay sugar is a noun of uh, so a noun like we said here the noun or a pronoun always comes after the phrasal verb sugar okay you cannot say now you cannot say it's wrong to say you must cut sugar down on okay you cannot say that look the examples below also you have to memorize them like I said don't, uh, don't see it like it's a lot it's hard to uh, memorize all these words no you do not just memorize them you practice them and write them in sentences uh, after that it will come to you spontaneously okay catch up on it's one of the examples catch up on come down with 
come up with, cut down on, <clears throat> drop out of, feel up to, get away with, get down to, get along with, get rid of, load up on, look down on, look forward to, make do with, run out of, take care of. Okay, students? Now, let's get to the exercise on page 57. We will write the exercise together on page 40, uh, 57. On page 57, okay? So practice will help you memorize uh, the words that you uh, are giving or the, the examples before. Okay? Let's begin with exercise A on page 57. Let's read from the beginning. Complete the sentences with a particle from the box. These are particles. You have almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven particles. Some of the particles can be used more than once. Look at that. You can use some of these particles more than once. Why? Because you have seven options here and you have 11 uh, gaps or spaces to fill. Okay? So you need to use some of these particles more than once. Some of them, not all of them. Okay? So let's look at the first example. My sister has gone too many crazy diets last month. She was on a, okay, it's, uh, it's like a passage, small passage, okay, about someone's sister. And uh, we need to fill in the spaces with these particles. Okay, the first one is, my sister has gone too many crazy diets. What do you think? So, the most correct particle here is, after the, the verb gone, gone on. Ga gone on. Too many crazy diets. Last month, she was on a diet that called her to eat almost nothing. Called what? What particle is suitable for this space or gap? So, it's four. Okay, almost nothing but uh, grapefruit all day. Initially, the, uh, the diets seems to work. They take weight quickly. Weight off. Weight off. Look at the grammar rule, you will find weight off. Okay? But a few weeks later, my sister always seems to put the weight again. So, we need something like weight. You have the same example at the, the grammar rule. Weight off and weight On. It's like uh, opposite of each other. Weight off means to lose weight. Weight on, it means to gain weight. Okay? And the diets were making her tired and weak. I pointed this to her. Pointed this. So it's separable. It was separated by this. So pointed this out. Pointed this out to her last week and we talked my concerns. We talked over 
okay? We talked over my concerns. I asked her to figure a better way of losing weight. So figure what? Figure out. Figure out a better way of losing weight. She thought it and agreed to give. So she thought, thought, like think. The, the base form is think. So think over. And agreed to give the crazy diets. The crazy diets. So give what? Because it's crazy, so I need to let it go. Don't do it. So agree to give up. To give up the crazy diet. She is going to look more sensible diets. Look. So search, like searching. So she's going to look 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 what? Into look into more sensible diets. Okay, the last one is more sensible diets and she's going to try to burn calories with more exercise burn off so look at this we used on on uh, twice and out twice over twice off twice so we use some of the particle more than once okay these are the answer for the this exercise exercise a look at now exercise b let's look at exercise b at the same page page 57 rewrite each sentence with a pronoun then circle s if the phrasal verb is separable or ns if it is a non-separable okay this is an example we came across a great recipe so he want to use or rewrite this sentence using a pronoun instead of noun. So we came across a great recipe. We came across it. It refers to a great recipe. A great recipe. Okay? Is it separable or non-separable? We cannot say we came, okay, it across. Okay? So it is a non-separable. We cannot separate them. Let's begin the actual exercise. Exercise one. Okay, I'm going to send back this food. I'm going to send back this food. Okay, I need to change this food into a pronoun. So how do I say it? Uh, say like, I'm going to send, what? Hello? Uh, should I say I'm going to send back it? Does it sound right? Or I'm going to send it back? Which of these sentences sounds more suitable or more correct? That's right. I'm going to send it back. It here refers to this food. Okay? So is it separable or non-separable? It was separated by it. A pronoun. Okay, so it is separable. Excellent. Look at the second exercise. <clears throat> second sentence. Most people can't tell apart. I am from a sweet potato. So most people can't tell apart. I am from a sweet potato. I need to change the last nouns to a suitable pronoun and put it in a sentence. I am from a sweet potato. This is the noun. How do I use a suitable pronoun? Them. Them refers to I am 
and the sweet potato. Look at them. Them, it's an object pronoun. Object pronoun. These yam and sweet potatoes are objects, so I use them. Okay? Look at them. It came between tell and apart. The particle is tell apart. Tell apart. Them came between them. So, is it separable or non separable? It is separable. Most people can't tell them apart. Look at the third exercise. You need to throw out the moldy cheese. Where is the object or the noun object here? The moldy cheese. I need to use a suitable uh, pronoun. A suitable pronoun. It. Because it's moldy cheese. It. Okay? So, you need to throw it out okay you need to throw it out is it separable or non separable it's obvious it became between the throw and out so it is a separable phrasal verb okay let's look at fourth sentence i never tire of chocolate so tire off Chocolate here is the the noun object. I need to replace it with it. So I never tire of it. I never tire or tire of it. So can I say I never tire it off? No, it will have a different meaning. Okay? So, the correct form is, I never tire of it. Okay? So, is it separable or non-separable? Non-separable. It's easy and obvious. Okay? Let's continue to the fifth uh, sentence. Wake up Gina for breakfast. So, wake up Gina for breakfast. So, wake up is the phrasal verb. Gina for breakfast. So Gina is the noun I should replace with a pronoun, okay? How can I say it? It will be like this. Wake her up for breakfast. So I replace Gina, replace Gina with a pronoun, her, okay? Look at her. It became between wake and up, so it is a separable phrasal verb. The last one is, I never turn down dessert. So, how do I say it? I never turn down dessert. So, dessert is the pronoun, the noun object. I need to place dessert with a pronoun. The suitable pronoun is it, and it will become between the verb and the particle. I never turned it down. And it is separable phrasal verb. Okay, students, let's get to the last exercise. The last exercise is very easy and uh, about uh, the three word phrasal verbs. So, like we said in the grammar rule, the three word phrasal verbs uh, is always non separable. Okay, we cannot separate them. So we need to figure out and memorize the examples of the three word phrasal verbs and put them in sentence. Like for the example here, I don't feel up to going out to dinner tonight. So I don't feel up to. So he don't want to. He's not enthusiasm about going up out to dinner tonight. Okay. Look at first example. He ran to the supermarket because we ran. So what should I write here? Look at the example. Run. Ran. Out. Run out. Of milk. Run out of milk. Okay, 
look at this run out of milk what is the meaning of run out of milk or, or ran out of came to an end of or used up so when we ran out of something you don't have it anymore you ran out you use it all okay look at the second exercise or the second sentence these shoes are old I think I'll get them so the shoes are old I think he he's uh, don't want them anymore so I think I'll get get what when you do not want something anymore and you want to get rid of them get rid of what is the meaning of get rid of throw away something that is unwanted like I said these sh shoes are old so he doesn't want them anymore so he'll get rid of them get rid of them let's look at the third exercise or third sentence she has heart problems her doctor told her to cut fatty foods she has heart problems her doctor told her to cut fatty foods so cut what down on cut down on fatty foods it means to reduce the amount used to make less okay she eats too many fatty foods so she has heart problems okay so she need to cut down on reduce okay look at the fourth sentence they came food poisoning after they ate the spoiled milk meat after they ate, ate the spoiled meat they uh, came food poisoning so what do you think came down with came down with became ill with something so came down with became ill with something okay look at the fifth sentence marathon runners often load pasta the night before a race load pasta load what up on marathon runners often load upon pasta the night before a race it means to get a lot of something to, to eat a lot of pasta the night before a race because pasta has a lot of energy in it uh, not no like sugar look at we're looking trying the new Indian restaurant so looking look trying the new Indian restaurant new Indian restaurant they are like uh, happy and want to try it so we are looking forward to forward to it mean anticipating with pleasure anticipating it mean like waiting waiting for something with pleasure looking forward to okay okay that's all students thank you very much for your time and i hope you practice more to memorize all the examples before practice 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 thank you very much and goodbye